Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring your boy, Eustace Captain Kid. Get ready. This is going to be a very, very spicy aggro variant for all you guys out there who love to just go face, because why not? But if you guys don't know or live underneath a rock, this is a very aggressive build that does just that. You rest all the blockers with Straw Sword and Paradise, and then you just attack face. You generally are not playing a lot of bodies on board. In my particular list, I am playing bodies, and we'll get into it and why I chose to do so. But overall, let's start off with the opening hand here. In most of your matchups, be it if you're playing into yellow, I like to open up with beige and Monet. Those are my go-to searches for my uh, mulligans and all that sort of thing. I'm looking for either or on top of a straw sword. If I draw a kid, or Dofi in the opening hand, I'm, I'm still set, but I'm looking for something of that nature when it comes to those cards. We're also running 12 2K counters, be it that Izo, Scratch Minapu, and then Carrot though. Carrot does not get used. She essentially is just a 2K. The same thing with Apu, realistically. The Izo does come down occasionally to rest a blocker, but don't feel too bad if you have to do that. This is also why we're playing with 12. That way you guys have other options in case you have to throw away an Izo to rest something. Now, the killer here is a, I want to say is a flex pick. You can take it out realistically. He doesn't normally get attacks in. He just becomes a body on board off a trigger, nine out of 10. And sometimes you can swing in for five, but otherwise you're typically popping like a Paro Sparrow or like a Pudding or, or something small. He doesn't really do much value for you. He's just there to play off a trigger and occasionally get something done. So you can swap this out for other cards, which is not a problem. Now, we do have some other flex picks being Yamato, in which I do think this card is pretty good in this list, considering the fact that on your four Dawn turn, you don't really do a whole lot besides just attach Dawn and swing for 9k generally. So in a situation, you can get a body down, attack for five, and then rest something as well and then they have to deal with another 6k the following turn, which is pretty good. But other than that, that this is really her only use is rest queen, kid, and that's about it. If you don't see a straw sword for whatever reason. Now, I've been meaning to take out killer here. And when you do take out killer, considering it is a flex pick here, you can swap that out with Bonnie, just because Bonnie allows you to search out your supernovas, be an Apu, your punk Gibsons, a lot of things really in your straw sword these are your big things that you can search out with your bonnie to make sure this deck's a little bit more consistent you can also get your veggies as well but that's something for you guys to test i do like the bonnie variant better over the killer but for right now i'm going to show you guys this list instead now you might see the kid and you might see the dofi and be wondering why these guys are in the list again I am playing with bodies on board for this list, opposed of some other lists that you might have seen out there. I think the Kid and the Dofi respectively do a lot for this build, especially the Eustace Kid. And that's because on your nine dawn turn, when you drop down the Kid, you can't really do your, you know, your leader effects because you're only swinging for five, right? But Kid allows you to get this body on board and allows you to play either a Beji or a Monet. And the best thing about playing Monet off of your kid's effect here is the fact that when your opponent attacks, if you choose to block with Monet, you can rest something on their side of the field, be it another blocker that you don't have to worry about with Straw Sword the following turn when you're trying to go for game or set up plays. And that is something to that's really going to slow down your opponent. It really hurts Sakazuki because they have to attack into you minus one, then Hound Blaze you away, and then they have to deal with the kid as well in the same turn. It's a lot to go on, and especially when they're used to seeing that, you know, Eustace Kid doesn't play a lot of bodies on board. And if you're waiting until the end game to start dropping your big boys, they might, you know, throw away Luchis. They might throw away Ice Ages and Hound Blazes up until that point. But that's something to consider. I will tell you, playing against Katakuri, Kid is amazing, to be fair. Of course, they can play their Katakuri to, you know, to bounce yours to the life or what have you. But if not, this card is sticking on board generally and then of course we all know what 10 drop dofi does there's not much downside to this card it is just so good right now in all green decks all variants and you may see that we are running this event 
And that's because, again, we do have a few cards that don't have counter power with the Dofis, the Kids, and the Yamatos. So we need something to pitch if we have to. But this is also another very strong card off trigger to rest something. But overall, we are going to dive into some games here. And we'll see what we can do. I'll see you all in a split second. Now, before we get into today's games, I do want to go ahead and say thank you to ACG Town for sponsoring this video. This is one of the places where I come to look at certain anime and when it comes to like apparel and all that sort of thing, this is one of the websites. It's actually pretty solid. They have some decent prices, let alone there's their sales all the time for all of your favorite animes out there. One Piece from Demon Slayer to Honkai Star Rail. Not an anime, but it's something that everyone out there is playing right now. Genshin Impact, Jujutsu Kaisen. There's a lot of stuff here from Bleach, Fairy Tale, all that sort of stuff. But either way, they do clothing, apparel, all sorts of apparel from 3D printed hoodies, which are actually really, really good. And we're not talking about like those generic hoodies or t-shirts you find inside of the mall that has just, you know, a random anime picture on it. No, no, no. These actually look really, really good, man. These look pretty fire. Now, for those of you guys out there that work out and stuff and are interested in shorts, I picked up a pair of these recently and they they have that that double layer aspect to them. I know it's something simple, but these these are dude, these are amazing. Now, other than that though, they do have things like phone cases, your backpacks and all that sort of thing. And when it comes to phone cases, they range from a wide of different animes and mobile games and stuff such as Honkai Star Rail, Genshin Impact, all of that. But overall, give this place a shot. Let me know what you think about it. So I don't know if you can tell, but I am currently losing my voice as of today. I'm doing, I've am doing. i been doing a lot of videos today just to have it in backlog. And it, it's a lot of talking, so bear with me. I'm going to try my best. It's just something that we have to, you know, we, we got to do. You know what I mean? But overall, we are playing into a Rebecca. And this is one of those decks where Kid is going to shine, especially if she does not get a lot of blockers on board. Because all we can do is go face and she loses tempo because she cannot attack us back here. Now we had a play here. I could have just swung for five and she could have either taken the hit or blocked out and then I could have played down the killer, but it seemed a little bit irrelevant. So and speaking of blockers, here comes the second Adeo, but we're gonna do the exact same thing as last time. We're gonna go seven. And if she decides to block, we'll pitch a card and go seven again. Shockwave. Okay. All right. Interesting list so far. Go seven again. Our hand actually is looking pretty good because I don't have to worry about a whole lot. Once she realizes we're just going to keep going face, she's going to spend a lot of her dawn just to play blockers on board, which is cool with me because I don't have to worry about attacks at all. You know what I mean? Until Luffy comes down, if she runs Luffy in this variant. We'll go nine here. Nice. And we'll restand and do it again. Killer's not going to get value, so might as well. And this is how aggressive this deck can be. We stop her from using leader ability. We get two damage in. And we're already on turn four. So again, we force her out to play another Sabo down. She gets to cycle a couple cards off the effect, but still. Okay, another Deo. That's an issue. Ooh, we have the combo here. We have nine Dawn with Kid and Monet. This is a tough call. Like realistically, if I decide to go kid and put Monet on board as well, I can't swing. So I lose a little bit of tempo and she gets to stick her cards on board for a turn. So we're just gonna go all out. This will force her to have to block or take the damages, of course. Nice. We decided to throw away Punk Gibson because at the end of the day, we're tapping out each time we attack here and we can't really rest the sabo because it's a five cost and she doesn't really play anything other than that as a blocker besides rebecca i guess some of them will play down barts here as well i mean not really worried about that but you know each the own so we can rest him if need be hmm this might be a good idea but this could be a bait because i don't know what type of deck that she runs so I'm weary when it comes to the Red Rocks. So I think I'll test the waters. 
and I'll drop a kit first and then I'll play a Dofi later maybe to see if she does have red rocks but for now we're just gonna try to clear the board just keep taking the hits notice I still have five life and as a big Rebecca fan it's just gonna get worse when older when newer sets come out and she gets you know power crept even further because she can't swing you know what I mean I feel like when Yamato comes out in OP06, if you run into a Yamato as Rebecca, man, good luck. Another Kiros is coming down here as well. He can't pop anything, and he can't swing. No Kong gun, but Luffy's going in for nine, apparently. All right, I'll take it. Please restand. Do it again. Thank you. So she lost out on having 15 cards in the trash for a Kong gun at some point. So she has to get back there. Which now I feel a little bit safer. And we are at 10 Dawn. 7 cards in trash. She has 6 in hand. I think we'll play Kid this turn. And then see if she does have a Red Rock. Either way, if she does pop the kid we'll get a monet on board and we can block and arrest the kiros if need be do we attack first here though i don't think it actually matters so let's go six she should probably block with bart if i had to guess okay all right i'm cool with that all right let's get down the kid we'll activate his effect to play monet for free and then attach a Dawn. That way, you know, she has to attack him. That's very important. I know it's self-explanatory, but some people kind of forget to do that. I'll be honest. So there's a Red Rock. Okay, cool. Odds is she probably doesn't have another one in hands. There goes another Shockwave off Leader Effect. Another Coliseum as well. Hmm. To me, that seemed a little bad. I would have probably not drawn either of those cards. Like, she had an option of Coliseum or Shockwave, right? You don't have to draw any of them. You can put both in the trash. That way, you know, your grave can count up to for Luffy's ability. So. But either way. Let's see if she has another Red Rock here. These Monets, I'm trying to tell you, are going to be so clutch here. Or Lumbus into a Sakazuki. What is going on here? And Ice Age. Okay. Hmm. Should we take the hit? Do I care? Straw Sword. So we're going to have to play this. Hold on to this for the Sabo. To probably go for game. Because I think we've seen... Two Sabos, maybe, if I remember? I don't remember. I think it was two. We'll take this as well. Okay, restanding. All right. You want to swing again? No? Okay. Not bad. All right, so I can't get value here with Yamato. That would be insufficient Dawn here, essentially. So how do we do this? We Straw Sword the Sabo, of course, right? We have eight Dawn left. Okay, so realistically, what I have to do, like there's no question, my third Monet has to hit the board here. So I think I will attack into the Sabo in hopes that she does get rid of it. She's got two cards in hand, and I'm going to assume one of them has no counter power at this stage in the game. She has taken some questionable hits and which she shouldn't have. You know what I mean? Let's go seven in the Sabo here. If she decides to counter out, I'll pitch a card in hand to attack again, but apparently not. So we don't have to do that.
You have six Dawn left. So the only thing realistically I want to do is actually get down Monet. Carrot doesn't get value here. And there's no point of dropping Yamato here either. Now, should we attack again is the question. Because we did see some 3,000 worlds. So it's a potential she gets one off of life here, which would suck. Please don't. It's got to be a trigger of some sort. Okay, Kong gun. Not so bad. There goes another Coliseum. And the Kong gun. All right. We're looking good here. So remember, Luffy can attack active units, right? So what happens is we'll block out with another Nimone. Because her ability doesn't work unless she is the blocker. So he's attacking the active. So now if we block with another Monet, we can rest the Kiros and then rest the Alumbus with the other Monet. Which she still does have 10 Dawn here, so. A little spooky. So we'll rest that one. All right, she's restanding again. So we'll block with the other Monet to rest the Alumbus. Then we have one blocker left for Sakazuki. Okay, never mind. Hmm. No Dawn active, one life left. Let's take the hit. Hey. Like, that's pretty good. We won't be able to survive next turn, but she won't either. And this should be a good game. Should be able to go 12 here and uh, back to back, and that should be it. Unless those are four 2K counters, which I doubt it. So, yeah, well played. So the more and more I test this deck into this matchup, I've come to figure out that this list here specifically comes down to how many triggers Katakuri sees. Because at the end of the day, we're just going face, boys and girls. We're going face. We're looking for beige, for beiges, which we have an opening hand, which is great, right? Because this will protect us from the 7Ks each and every turn he swings on us. But other than that, it all depends on what triggers that they do get off of life for you to win this match. And specifically, I'm talking about Shirahoshis, really, and Thunderbolts. Because Thunderbolts will take care of your blockers. Even though we don't run that many, but, you know, it's still it's still a thing. But the Shirahoshis really help him out due to the fact that they can cycle dead cards for more counter, which is really, really bad. Let's go five here. There we go. already at three life we double hit for five that's crazy okay what is he playing here cracker maybe or smoothie all right i find that a little weird to try to go for that with cracker I get the fact that you have lower life than me, and that's what's going to be happening majority of this game. Maybe that's what he's banking on. I just don't think that's the correct play. Because again, we do have a beige on board, and we have multiple in hands. Obviously, he doesn't know that, but still. And I might just take the hit, to be fair with you. Especially considering it's turn three, he's already at two life. Ooh, Genetsu, though. That sucks. All right. We'll punk Gibson. We'll rest a cracker and deal with it. All right. So we get a Yams here as well. Monet could be pretty good here, but I think we're just going to go face. I want to try to get this man down as quickly as I possibly can before 10 drop mom can come down and give this man a second chance, if that makes sense. Wow. Three cards out of that. That's crazy. Hmm. Is it worth it, though? Because instead, we can play Punk and Capone right now. 
Hmm. Might as well. I mean, he's, he's got six cards in hand, one life left. It's all or nothing, boys and girls. It's all or nothing. I think he's sitting on eight dawn, right? Is that math? Yeah, eight dawn. Oh, he's going for it. No Katakuri this turn either. We'll take this hit. Surely he attaches Dawn to leader, though. I'll counter out of this one. What are you playing? A blocker? Ah. Uh, I can't wait to see what cards he has in his hand. He must have drew really, really bad. And sometimes I feel like this is the way it needs to be. You shouldn't always have to rely on your life to win you a game. You know what I mean? To be fair. So, it'd be what it'd be. That's 11. Does he have it? Nice. Look at all those moms, man. Ready to go. Man's loaded up. No, we ain't playing again. We out of here. Now, I would think that this is going to be actually a tough matchup for you. Ace and or Zoro, I think, could run you over, realistically. Especially a good Zoro or Ace player. Considering the fact that they can go wide and have so many bodies on board and just keep going for your face. So, that's something you have to consider. What did he draw off that, by the way? Flame Emperor. Okay. And considering this is ace, that's double attacks you have to worry about. And when we are mostly tapped out of Dawn, that's 8k, double attack, that's... that hurts. Speaking of which, here we go. I think we would just take this hit and keep up a uh, compone here. As soon as the game... there he goes. That's fine. We got a Cat Viper here, which is nice. Oh, Buggy's attacking too. All right. An aggro ace deck. Let's go. Block out. This might not be the normal, but it's probably for the better if I clear his board here. Like, I feel like that would have to be the play. Even though I don't want to. But I think this can become a problem really, really quick if I don't handle it. We're kind of far away from Dofi, of course, so we can go five into Buggy, and then I can just drop down Yams and pass turn. That gives me another body on board that he'll have to contend with at some point. Of course, you can just Fire Fist or Flame Emperor in the following turn. Not next turn, but the following one. Or Jet Pistol, I guess. He has a lot of options, but we should be okay. If she sticks for a single turn, that is three damage next turn that we possibly can get out of him. All right, so he's going 5k to face. Hmm going block out. It's going six, one card up. I assume that's for a guard point, maybe. All right, so we get a kid, which is really, really good here. Kind of. Because he is in Flame Emperor, you know, kind of range, so. But we'll see. Interesting. One of the cool things about this matchup, though, is the fact that we don't really care too much about the triggers. Considering the triggers in this matchup are generally just going to pop my cards on board, and we don't play too many of them, for it to really hurt me that much. So letting the Yamato stay on board, even for a turn, is really going to hurt him. 
Barfist? No? Okay. All right. Hmm. I guess we get rid of Adofi. Just in case he runs choppers and or... um, I forgot the other blocker is called. I think it's Fossa, right? Yeah, Fossa. The two cost guy. We've got eight cards in hand. Radical Beam. Okay. And guard point. All right. Interesting. I guess he had to do it like that because guard point would only have made him to an, an 8k. So I guess that does make sense. But maybe he didn't have any other 2k counters in hand. So that's a good sign. So now he's at six dawn here. Or sorry, seven dawn here. So there's Emperor. Emperor comes down to kill Beige for some reason. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. That makes sense. Because he couldn't get the double attack in unless he killed the blocker, right? So we take the hit. Hey, look. I mean, we get a killer. I swear, there are some instances where killer is pretty good. It's rare, but there are some. This is why I do prefer the... The one-cost Bonnie searchers. I think they have a little bit more value here. Alright, so we get a second straw sword. He's at three life with six in hands. I think we'll just be a little bit more aggressive here. There's no reason to play down a Monet at this moment in time. I don't think so, considering the fact that he does have Fire Fist. It's a potential. So we'll just go six. Okay, so it gives me a 2k. We're at 8 Dawn. Hmm. I'm just trying to debate whether or not if it's worth it to play down Kid. I know Kid can't be, you can't block with him, but he does allow me to play down Monet. And maybe he'll try to get rid of it, which is fine, you know? But we'll see. What do you want to do here? Just be another 2k. So he did have 2k's in hands. Hmm, seems like a weird play for the Radical Beam and Guard Point. At this point then. Let's go ahead and trash. Probably Cat Viper. Reached and go for 5 again. I want to leave up 2 Dawn just in case for Punk Gibson here. And in case he decides to Flame Emperor me again and get rid of the Monet and attacks my face for 8k. Punk Gibson will put, push me the 9 and I can rest the whatever card he has on board at that point. Assuming it might be a Zoro, you never know. Because we are at 1 life. Okay, so a Buggy comes down. Sweet. That's what I like to see. Yeah, because that could have been a... If he's at 9 Dawn, so that could have been a Flame Emperor into a Fiery Doll at some point. There is a Flame Emperor. I think we're good, boys. We got there. Oh, he's attacking Yamato, actually. Yeah, we won't let that happen. We'll Punk the Magra. And this should be game this turn. Realistically. I mean... Actually. It won't be because we don't have enough here. It's one Dawn up, so it's a potential he does have a guard point or a rad beam in hands. So let's find out. Okay, he takes the hit. Let's go five to face. Gives me a Marco. So that leads me to believe he has another Marco in hands. 
Otherwise, I don't know why you decided to throw that away unless he got that off of life just now. But if not, and he had another one, he probably should have played it on the previous turn. But we'll see. If he does decide to play Marco, okay, never mind. It's a Luffy. This is an issue. Huh. I think I can live this. He's at four Don left. He doesn't know what's in the hand here. If he doesn't go for game, he definitely loses on the following turn, right? Oh, he's going seven for this. Okay. Um, no. Interesting. Oh, okay. Here comes a Marco down. That's fine. Well, good game, buddy. So we just do the sword. We go 7k to face. This should be a free damage regardless, right? So we get that out of the way. And then leader and Dofi swing. Nice. And GG. So unfortunately, I've been having a lot of fun with this deck. And I didn't think I would. Of course, it won't be like any of my top favorite decks i would say it's not it's not up there but it is very very fun to play it's cheap it's consistent so for new players out there who are really a big fan of kid this is a very solid deck overall especially for those out there who want to take it to locals win a couple events and all that sort of thing you definitely can do it with this list i'll tell you what or a list similar to this if that makes sense but anyway we'll come back at you with the exact same list playing into a katakuri here who did not draw pudding on the opening hand, which is pretty nice. But this means that Parasparo will come down here. Yep, attack me for five. I can counter out. I'll play down a Paro. Yep. And we're looking real good right now, just because of that play. So, let's go seven. And then uh, we'll go seven again. Gives me a beige and a Sirahoshi. Give it a killer because it's not any value right now. There we go. Already at three life and no trigger, it seems. Okay, never mind. Paro Sparrow. There's a little bit of pressure on board that I really didn't want to have to deal with, but uh, it's to be expected playing into yellow. Speaking of which, when I have a couple more uh videos that i want to get out from opo5 list that i'm still playing around with and then we're going to dive into some opo6 i'm very excited to play with yamato considering the fact that she is green yellow and she does have the banish effect with double attack i do think she's going to make a very very good deck but if you combine her with this current kid list here and do straw swords and rest units i think it'll be pretty strong so i'm tinkering around with that i can't wait to show you guys There goes a brulee. Nice. So we can Yamato here, but there's no point. Instead, we're to drop down Paradise, rest it, and just go face again. There's no reason to clear these Peros off board either. He's got four cards in hand, so I'd rather just go face. Get rid of Yams here. Nice. Okay, Shirahoshi. goes a thunderbolt and another paro all right so we do have the straw sword to come down that way we can rest the brulee again and then just end the game hopefully unless he decides to play sanji blockers or more brulees down then we're in trouble because the longer this game stalls out the more problematic it is going to be for you considering the fact that they're going to drop 10 drop big mobs so what am i to do at that point Oh, okay. All right. Sure, buddy. Hmm. Nah, we're going to save it. This gives me one extra Dawn to attach the leader for the following turn. 
Oh, that's nice. Never mind. We'll punk the brulee. I know it's weird, but if I punk the brulee instead of the Paro Sparrow, I don't have to waste Dawn on the following turn to rest it here. Which is ideal, because that's more damage to his face that he has to worry about. He does have three Dawn up, so it's potential to drop another blocker. Okay, never mind. He said he didn't care. Hmm. Uh-oh. Alright, fair enough. And uh, that should be game for us here then. Unfortunate. I guess we'll just do the thing. There's not much else we can do here. He does have this round. But it's all good. Sometimes we win some, sometimes we lose them. I wonder if that Shirahoshi though gave him the cards to be able to, to be able to do that. It's a possibility. But I don't think we have enough to counter out here. We'll see. It's gonna go nine. I think if we punk rest this, I still have to get rid of another card in hand. Yeah, he got this one. Well played, well played. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got one more in me and then I'll bring you back to the deck edits and we'll talk about some of the future changes to the list that you can make for OP06. But for now, we're playing Kid into Green Purple Doflamingo, which I'm pretty excited about considering I kind of know the list, you know, in and out. So I'm kind of curious on what he's running here. And speaking of which, I'm going to go on record and say, as soon as Sakazuki gets nerfed, I think Film Dofi, if you guys remember Film Dofi in OPO4, has a chance to be dominant again. Also, Birdcage might be quite strong. And I'm not just talking about like, you know, a tier three deck. I'm talking about at least potential to be a tier two, a tier one deck. And that's the mixture of Film and or just pure Dofi family. I think he can come back. So we'll see. It all depends on the nerfs and what they do to Sakazuki and Moria to make this guy stand out. But anyway, let's get back into the game here. He already decided to take a life, so we should be pretty good. So at five dawn, no birdcage yet. At least I don't think so. Hmm. Okay, all right, 5k to face. It's a potential. I just don't think it'll help him at all. Put on Monet here. Diamante. Interesting. Either he didn't have Cage, or he's not running it in this build, or he just didn't draw it. But either way, let's go 6k to face. He has two Dawn active, obviously, so it's a potential that he has Spiderweb or another 2k counter. Yep. Let's just do it again. And this is another reason why I think this is actually really good. It's the fact that your opponent has to discard extra cards to protect themselves from your attacks. And it's kind of obnoxious, to be fair. It really is. Especially if you're not ready to face a kid at all. And most decks really aren't. Unless you're Purple Luffy, who generally has a lot of blockers, you know what I mean? Other than that, man, you kind of just run rampant on a lot of decks. Unless that deck can get, you know, I guess how you say trigger happy, I guess. So, you know, talking about yellow lists. Daddy Masterson. Okay, I can see how useful this could be in Birdcage. I just don't, eh, not for me. But with him in the list, I, I just assume he does have Cage in here at some point. It's going seven here. We'll just take the hit. Ooh, nice. Is it worth it, though? I could rest him. Nah, let's not do that. Let's not do that. We'll save it for later. There's no point in just resting him right now. 
another punk gibson which is pretty nice we're at eight dawn here no cards to play down essentially besides a capone so if i can help it i'll play at least a capone down and go face here yeah that's right so 9k so we'll have to toss down an event and then a 2k or 1k to protect himself here Unless he blocks with Diamante and then plays the event down. Okay. What are you doing? Okay, spider web. Let's throw away a punk and we'll attack into that again. No, no, yeah. We'll go we'll go him again, Diamante. Why not? Get the blocker out of the way for now. Because that'll also slow him down from actually attacking me. Masterson I don't care about. Because we have Punk Gibsons here. And Paradise. So just rest him if need be. Oh, that's not what you want to do. I think the reason why this play doesn't work in this scenario. Because he has no blockers on board. And we're just going to take away two life from him in the following turn. Of course, he can attack in for six with, with the Masterson and then seven with the Dofi leader. But we don't care about that right now. I think he needed to get a blocker down. Okay, good job. So he's going seven. We'll do this for now. And then we can throw away the 2k. And now we're good. So he restands, which is fine. We go back up to 10 Dawn. No Dofi, no kid yet. Which is okay. What should we do here? Because next turn is going to be three attacks here. Let's go 10 to face. I want to save up two Dawn at the very least for Gibson. Because in this scenario, he needs to play down in an event and then a 1k counter to protect himself. Charleston and a Sugar. Fair enough. Get rid of Cat Viper, and we'll go 10k again at face. So on the following turn, what will have to happen? We'll have to attack with Kid first to give his leader a boost. When he does, we can just go Punk Gibson and rest the Masterson there. We should be okay. Oh, all right. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Love to see it. Kind of saw that coming, but that's fine. Now let's go ahead and punk. Then we can throw away a 2k here. Because I think we should keep the Capone for now. You love to see it. And uh, good game, buddy. Well played. I mean, I guess realistically, we could restand the kid with our leader effect and then swing with our, our leader and then put the rest of the Don on Capone. That just doesn't seem like a good idea. So let's just do, you know, the normal thing. Play the Dofi and pass turn. Now, the question is if he has back-to-back -back Dofis, because that would suck. All right, he doesn't. It was 10k. Let's take the hit. We get a straw sword here, which actually will just let us win the game. Killer as well. Arrest the Diamante and the Wisco face. What do? Unless he's running the five cost event, which I don't believe anyone does. But if he did, that would suck. But I think we got this one. This 
just even if he pops it, we can just restand our leader and uh, attack again. Let's go, boys. What are those cards? That's awkward. Anyway, let's go back into the deck list. See you guys in a split second. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, and I appreciate it for all you guys that stuck around to the end of the video. This was a uh, this was a long one. At least I feel like it was. It probably wasn't, just because my voice is you know pretty much shot. At least it feels like that way. So, you know, it sucks. It'd be what it'd be. Anyway, for those of you out there who are interested in this leader, or just like Kid in general, this is a very, very spicy deck list, and it only gets better in EB01, OP06, and OP07. Once we get more support, and there have been a lot of cards leaked, and which are, aren't currently on the sim from OP07, which is going to make this leader even stronger than he is currently. But for EP, EP, for OP06, we do have some interesting cards, be it Hody Jones, which I'm very excited to play with in this deck. And if you haven't already experimented with this, it is very, very good. Just for the fact that this is a seven cost that allows you to come down with Rush on board, rest two of your opponent's characters, doesn't matter the cost, and then go for face, which is really, really good. On top of that, we do have Noah's Ark, which is interesting. You're never going to hard cast this ever from, from hands, realistically. So off the trigger, which is pretty good. You can rest all the cards in your opponent's field. Now, like I said, this is going to be something to like consider. Not something that's just going to be like a staple or make this deck really, really busted. More so the Hody Jones is going to be really, really good here. We do have another card that's coming in this. What is it? I think it's a structure deck, right? Yeah, ST12 called Lion Song which it's a two cost and allows you to rest a four cost character or lower or you can rest a leader which is really really good and it has a counter and a main effect which is awesome with a trigger so this is crazy we do have another one as well be it this one with a long name this one's interesting i do think it's a little bit too expensive to be included in this list but it does have the effect where you can rest a six cost or less which is pretty strong but overall, I don't think it'll see play in this build. But that's just my two cents. We also have access to shark arrows as well. Now this is really good playing into an aggro list, be it from Bello Betty or Zoro or Red, Red Green Law, because they play a lot of small blockers or small bodies. But we're really out here to rest a lot of the problem blockers, right? We're not really here to rest a lot of the, the attacking pieces. We can. Like we can rest Zoro if we need be, but I don't think this will get a lot of value without taking a lot of key pieces from this list that you actually need. It's just something to consider. It's a pretty good card. I just don't see it getting a lot of play in Green Kid. I could be wrong. I'll have to play test with it. It's not really, you know, for me, but you know, this is something that some people will probably look into. You know what I mean? But overall, this has been my Green Kid list. There are a lot of decks similar to this. I've seen decks that have been running, uh, what is this thing called? Uh, you Can Be My Samurai, which is pretty good because logically speaking, if you play down the kid, you can rest the kid and whatever other card that you have on board for whatever reason and draw two cards. So that's something to consider. I've seen lists with this. I've also seen lists with Paradise Waterfall, which I think is pretty good, but it's only, it's only as good coming from the counter, if that being said. Because generally speaking, your opponent isn't attacking with your their Borsalinos or their four cost law blockers. You know what I mean? But this does allow you to restand your kid, which is nice. And then you have another option here with I'm not going to butcher this one, but this also allows you to get rid of certain blockers outside of Borsalino that are four drops, such as Sanji blocker, your brulee, all that sort of thing. But in any case, this has been my build. I do hope you guys enjoy it. Remember to smash that like button. Make sure to subscribe for your content when it comes to all things One Piece on the channel. And just know, there is a ban list coming soon. Ban list, restrictions, whatever you want to call it. After March 3rd, we should see some changes to Sakazuki, Moria, and yellow decks such as Katakuri. When we're talking Big Mom Pirates. But overall, I think a lot of decks in the format, the way they are now, will get boosted after these nerfs come through. So we might see a lot of more a lot more spicy variants of other decks coming up to the meta. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there. I'm gonna head out.